All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by America's positive attitude coach, Ryan Lowe from New Orleans, Louisiana. How are you doing, Ryan? Doing great. How are you? Excellent. Ryan's a motivational speaker, sales trainer, consultant, and author whose uh, his passion is working with companies and, and team members to inspire them to create a positive culture and mindset to achieve excellence. And today we're going to talk about the importance of a positive mindset in sales. So, Ryan, we're now in uh, August, right? And a lot of salespeople are on a calendar year. And, you know, maybe they're looking at their quota now and they're going what looked like an achievable quota back in January is now looking a bit daunting to them. And maybe all these self-doubts and and, uh, and and negative thoughts are creeping in. So let's start with people like that. What advice would you give to somebody who's maybe losing hope that they're going to achieve their quota this year? Uh, one of the things that I would suggest is going back and looking at their daily habits. What are they doing on a daily basis? Are they doing the same thing that they were doing at the beginning of the year? Um, and if they are, they're going to get the same exact results. Mm -hmm. So really looking at what they do on a daily basis, um, maybe have to shift their goals just a little bit. I know you can't shift the quota, but you can say, all right, what are my daily goals, my weekly goals, my monthly goals? You know, if I'm only hitting 10 doors a day, I'm going to have to bump it up to 20. If I'm a, you know, if I, uh, go, I'm only going on five appointments a week. I really need to be going on 10 appointments a week to hit my number. So it's kind of like at this point, you got to really bump up what you're doing on a daily basis. Right, right. And so, uh, and so a lot of it is, um, is getting back to best practices, right? And getting back to figuring out if you're doing, because let's face it, sometimes when things aren't going well, you kind of convince yourself you're doing everything you can, but you realize if you do what you just talk about, you may realize that maybe you're not putting your best foot forward. Yeah. It's a lot of times you just got to go back to the basics. Uh, you know, are you using your time correct? Are you really hitting the right prospects? Are you just hitting doors just to hit doors? Are you talking to the right decision makers? Are you asking for the business? Are you getting in front of the, the people uh, that you need to be in front of, but you're not comfortable or you don't know how most sales people that as I call them, um, really don't know how to ask for the business. So they're full of fear or they, they have the mindset that this person can't afford their product. So they're not going to really ask. And a lot of times if they would just have the confidence and build that confidence that they, when they go into a closing meeting or a network or a, uh, just any type of meeting with their client, that they're, they're going to be successful at it. So what are some of the ways that uh, salespeople just overall can start to build a better sense of self-confidence? Because I, I agree with you. A lot of the times, let's face it, I mean, salespeople have been bombarded with negative stereotypes and, and all of that. And they tend to often think, well, all the power lies in, in the hands of the buyer. Um, so what are some of the ways that they can start to build self-confidence and maybe look at themselves a little differently? Well, one of the things I always do in all my trainings is I have all my uh, clients and my, the people that I coach, I have them go over, you know, uh, 10 things. And I learned this from Brian Tracy. I, I traveled with Brian doing right. sales training for years. So I go over goal setting, time management, prospecting, identifying needs, um, presentation skills, closing techniques, how to handle objections, positive attitude, and then self-development. I always have them pick out their two weakest areas out of those 10. That's what you need to work on. Mm -hmm. If you that you're great at presenting, but you can't close, work on your closing. And what I'd say is go online, find uh, someone that is great at teaching closing techniques. You could probably go on YouTube. I know that you could probably Google closing techniques. Try a couple of them. Um, if you might be great at presenting, but your time management skills might be not where you need them to be because uh, you're not getting in front of enough people to present. Mm -hmm. go some books, uh, How to Beat Procrastination by Brian Tracy. There's a lot of great information out there that once you find your two weakest areas, you can Google or go find books or find videos. And that's why I'd say to start. So that's a, that's an interesting point because um, you know, sometimes when, when things aren't going well, people just assume it's just it's everything, right? When, as you say, it could be particular skills or particular areas of the sales process that they're that they're falling down on. And I guess this is an area where sales managers could really come into play if they're, if they're good at observing and coaching their people. 
Well, that's when I, when I, that, I'm glad you brought that up. When I train sales leadership, I tell them to look for those, those weakest areas. And it's not a, a bad thing. We all have. Them. Sure. Um, and once you know that, and once you know the areas that they need assistance with, that's some of the things that you can hone in on and then go back to some of the other areas that they're good at and keep working on those. So it's always an evolving process and you just got to stay on top of it daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly. But as you keep, uh, you know, just getting better and better and better at what you do, but it's all about going back and kind of, you know, coaching yourself too. Mm -hmm. uh, time in. I mean, when I first got in sales, I made a lot of friends in sales, but I couldn't close a thing. But once I learned some closing techniques, I would go, and I know this sounds kind of silly, go stand in front of a mirror, go do it to your wife, your husband, whatever, partner, and say, look, you know, can you listen to this? How does this sound? Mm -hmm. And a lot of that works. Yeah, and I think that I think you ra you raise a great point too because uh, sometimes we're not that we're not that good at uh, at number one analyzing ourselves and and then number two is going back and practicing the basics uh, and as you say I mean it's something you can do at home uh, it's uh, I mean great sports people I mean somebody told me a story recently about you know Kobe Bryant who apparently used to hit the hit the gym at 5 a.m. in the morning and then go to the basketball court and he wasn't practicing trick shots or fancy shots. He was apparently doing the most basic shot over and over again for hours because that was the basis of everything. And I think there's a good lesson for all of us is that sometimes going back and examining, uh, all, you know, just going back and making sure you've got all the bases covered and finding out maybe the one you're falling down on and, and, and practicing. Yeah, my one of my famous quotes or famous quote that I've heard is be extraordinary in ordinary things. Mm -hmm. And that's what you do. I mean, even here in New Orleans, Drew Brees, I've heard stories of him, you know, after a, a winning a game, going to the, he's got his wide receivers out there and they're just throwing normal passes, cut routes, things of that nature, because those are the little bitty things that you've got to get. Um, uh, you know, if, if, it's kind of like working out. You've got to have that muscle memory, even mm -hmm. when. You know, your mind's being negative and you've got all these negative thoughts and you're, you know, it's the end of the month, all that kind of stuff. You got to kick in the muscle memory and that's what will get you, you know, get you through. And so what are some of the things that you can do immediately prior, because you can do all this prep work and then you can maybe come up and you have a, a sales call. Maybe you have a meeting with somebody, maybe you have a, a an online meeting with them or a phone call or whatever. And a lot of people can defeat themselves in the moments before the the meeting because they just, you know, despite all the prep work they've done, all the, the doubts come back. So what are some of the things you can do to make sure that you go into an engagement with the best mindset possible? I always tell my clients, take 10 minutes before you walk in, close your eyes, sit down for a moment. It's kind of like back to sports. You know, Jack Nicholas would would imagine and and in his mind him making the final putt at the Masters. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like you know Kobe Bryant or some of these other ones that talk about you know they are always picturing and imagining them winning the game or making the final shot. It's the same exact thing. Take ten minutes before you go in, breathe. If you're sitting in your car or before you get on a conference call or whatever, and go over your notes and have the attitude that you're walking in with a great mindset that you are going to be the best, answer the questions that you need to, need to do, overcome the questions. And also too, getting the sales uh, person mindset out of your mind and saying, I'm going in as a consultant and mm -hmm. I'm going to fix the problems that this, my client has, because that's what it is. A doc, we're, salespeople are like doctors. If you find the problem, everybody buy, buys off of problems. Can you sure. fix my problem? Once you identify that, that's, that's half the battle right there. And if you can go into a sales or a closing meeting and, and explain how your feature, you know, I use the old fab feature application benefit, mm -hmm. how this feature works for you, how it applies, how you're going to be successful with it. And here's the benefit. I, I really think keeping it simple uh, is, is the best way to go. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, uh, as you say, I mean, going in there thinking that you're you're here to solve some problems, you're actually you're riding in to rescue the situation. So that should give you some confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, uh, absolutely. So what are some other ways that uh, that you can continue to keep a positive mindset? Say if you're in, you go in, great positive attitude, everything's going well, and then maybe something comes up in the meeting that throws you. And I've noticed that this is one thing that happens to a lot of people, um, you know, when they get knocked off their rhythm or their game, suddenly, as you said, they lose total confidence. What are some ways of getting yourself back on track? 
I always think about some of the wins that I've had. Mm-hmm. Um, I think about past clients. I think about even when, in my speaking business, I get invited to speak at these large conferences. And at first, that negative mindset comes in. Oh, my gosh. And then I go back and look and think about all the big conferences that I've spoken at and say, you know what? I can do this. You know what? It's going to happen. It's, I'm going to make it great, whatever I can do. Um, and you got to remember, too, we all get knocked down. Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody. I mean, I've probably been knocked down more than, you know, than I, I could imagine. And it's just thinking, I know that's a whole cliche, oh, get back up. But if you think about you've gotten back up before, you can get back up again. And uh, most salespeople that are successful, that are great at what they do, they know that they can't win every single time. You've got to go in the mindset of mm-hmm. some clients just can't see it. Some clients don't understand. Some clients, but if you uh, walk in and leave everything you got at the door and you know you did your best, then move on and go to your next client. Yeah. And I think that's a really important point that you brought up there is to look at your past track record because you didn't suddenly become terrible overnight, right? I mean, you didn't suddenly just forget everything and not able to do it anymore and you have successes to look back on. And I think those are those are really important that you that you bring them back back into your mind and you go, no, I mean, I, I, I can solve problems here. Maybe I can't solve this person's problem in the end. Maybe we're not compatible, you know, the, the solution or whatever, but I have been successful and I'll be successful again. And, and one of the other things I always share with people as well, and I, I do this, this kind of hit me. I'm a big uh, college football, NFL, love sports. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I've learned too is when I've gone through a bad season, it's just like sports. My favorite teams, they have a bad season. What do yeah. they do? They come back the next year, win the national championship, or they go to the playoffs. Life's the same way. You might have a quarter that, gosh, doesn't matter who you call. They don't answer the phone. You can't sell anything. Nobody wants to talk to you. Go into the next quarter. You know what? Forget that and go in that you. this is going to be the best quarter. And that's how you've got to just kind of – you've got to have uh, uh, instant uh, – instant, uh, uh, you know, you forget, you got to forget things quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's amnesia. That's what I call it. You, you've got to be able to just forget about it, move on. And it's the hardest thing, but at the same time, learn from it and move on. And uh, believe me, it's, it's not easy as it sounds, but it, it does work. Yeah. And I think the important thing in that um, is, it's a great point. But the important thing in that is that if you can look and say, I did everything I possibly could during that quarter. And, you know, it didn't work. Okay, it's fine. It didn't, but I put the effort in. Now, if I continue to work hard, I put the effort in next quarter, I'm going to have a good quarter. And also, you learn what not to do. Yeah. I, when I had bad months or a bad quarter or a bad year or whatever it may be, what, did I, what was I doing at that time that I, even though I did everything that I thought I could do best, what was I doing that I could take out of that equation? Yeah. And it's funny because even some of the best people, right, who are uh, in many ways, a a lot of us at times are are unconsciously competent, right? We're we're good at what we do, but we couldn't actually tell you what it is. And sometimes you have to take, you know, what it is, how we do. Sometimes you got to take a step back and say, look at your, as you said, look at your past successes, but really analyze what made it successful as opposed to just go, oh, well, I was successful. But actually look at it because I don't think people take enough time out actually to look at what they do that actually leads to success. Yeah. I always tell people too, if you can take a day, if you have to take a day up of work or whatever, go sit somewhere to library, wherever, and really map out, you know, what you do great, what some areas that you need to work on, you know, do you need coaching? Do you need to just go online and read some articles, grab some books, grab some audio books. I always tell people you really want to get back into a positive mindset, turn your car, like Brian Tracy says, university on wheels, I learned that years and years and years ago. And now with the iPhone and all that, it's so much easier to, to listen to a YouTube or listen to an audio book or something. And the great thing about that is you're going to pick up an idea and that idea is going to flourish and that's going to help you get through the next thing. So it might be a closing technique, might be a time management, might be a networking technique, whatever it may be, something's going to refuel you and that'll keep you inspired to keep going. Yeah, and I think that's, I don't know, I think that's a great point because there is a a temptation when when things are tough to just go oh i just need to get away from all of this when in fact as you say what you need to do is actually sit down and really analyze and then feed your mind i mean a lot of it is about feeding your mind with with good insights with positive insights yeah and i tell people also too don't do it just during the negative times do it do through the great times Mm -hmm. getting 
habit of getting up early in the morning and reading or at lunch bringing a book or if you know you got a 30 minute drive to a client get your you know your audio book set whatever it may be because that'll keep the momentum going because you never want to fall off the momentum and mm -hmm. then you got to back up again that's the hardest thing to do i mean mm -hmm. we go through that every year we take two or three weeks off of, you know for christmas and then all of a sudden january 1st hits and we're back up and going again mm -hmm. I tell people even during that Christmas time, that's when they should be planning their year, not day one of, of January, you know, day one of December. Start planning your year, your goals, what you're going to have and uh, and figure out all the different things that, you know, they're going to help you be successful. Absolutely. Listen, we're bumping up against the end of our time, Ryan. But before we go, I'd like you to tell people a little bit more about yourself, what you do, your books, etc. Sure. Um, you know, as most of you know, my name is Ryan Lowe. I've been named by peers and, and clients by, as America's Positive Attitude Coach. I go around the country speaking at large conferences, sales meetings, sales kickoff meetings. I also come into organizations and coach their leadership, sales leadership, and their sales teams, and now even their customer service teams, because it's all about my message, positivity, uh, productivity through positivity. Uh, you've got to stay positive, you know, through all of these different different sets, and um so it, it's a big uh, circle, a big uh, area that I cover, but also it's been really uh, great. So you can check out my book entitled Get Off Your Attitude. I also have another book called Goyaisms. It's it's inspirational quotes. And then everything is at uh, either getoffyourattitude.com or ryancelo.com. Excellent. Yep. Yeah. No, excellent. Listen, Ryan, this has been great. And I hope everybody's taken away some great pointers. Um, get off your attitude. Get positive. You've still, if you're on a calendar year, you've still got plenty of time. Just go back, you know, look at what you're doing, figure out where maybe you're falling down, start practicing the basics again, and and just believe. You've done it before, you can do it again, right? Absolutely. All right, listen, thanks, Ryan. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.